conclude the public participation portion of the meeting. Uh, we'll now move on to information items. Information regarding the district balance scorecard is included in the board packet, and Heather Bowman is available to answer questions. Are there any questions? I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to just provide just an overview or a highlight, just touch on a few topics of changes maybe that you've made over the course of a couple of years or something new that you're doing um, to try to increase some of those. Sure. Scores. So, you don't have to write now, but going when you meet next time, because this is kind of on the, on the fly. So yes. if you want to take Absolutely. time when you get back but are to there any highlights you want to add right now? There was nothing significant. The only thing I guess I did want to point out um, because it wasn't on there and I don't want people to ask later. So if you went back to 4G and 4H, that was the transitioning in between buildings. We, when we went back to our CSCI survey, there was not any question that related to that. And there was no additional survey that was put out during the year. We, did, we asked principal if there was anything. And so that is not applicable because we didn't gather any data on that this year just in the transition of things. So we've made a note of that and that gets added to that survey for next year. So I guess that was something I guess we wanted to make sure everybody was aware of. Um, increases, decreases, I mean, there were some good significant increases, so there were some positive things on like communication that we were excited to see. You know, I do have one quick question, and I don't know where it is. I, I found it at one time when I walked away from my computer and then I couldn't find it again, but I believe it, it, it spoke to the, the kindergartners and it was looking at fluency. Mm -hmm. At that age, do you ever look at comprehension? Not yet, generally. Okay. That fluency comes before comprehension, and the STAR assessment that we give really doesn't uh, assess that comprehension level. The teachers, of course, in their running records and things are gathering data on that through their formative assessments if the students are ready for that, but that fluency piece really comes first for them. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Information regarding the district star data is included in the board packet. Mrs. Bowman and Mr. Andrews will present information and answer questions. All right. Um, again, great growth at those early levels. Um, 
like seeing everything in the reading, you know, everything is above that 50th percentile, really high in those early years. Third grade is a big year to watch. Um, with the new ESSA requirements, the target goal for the state is to have all students reading proficiently, or 90% of your students reading proficiently in third grade. So those, that third grade year is going to be a big one to continue to watch and make sure that we're, we're meeting those targets as well. Um, and then this is just a math grade equivalence, and even at the past sixth grade year, you do see um, that you do see some pretty significant growth from uh, beginning to the end of the year there, um, as of blue versus red. And then high school, however, just because of how Star computes the data in the summary report, that's it's from it's bunched together and they're not broken down by 10 and 11, like you saw in the percentile scores, because of the equivalency. One thing I do like to point out on this report, I think it's good to see, if you take a look at it from year to year, so from kindergarten to first, first to second, and so on, you know, at the end of the year, the red, you see, so kindergarten ended at that point eight. They actually jumped over summer, and it started out the year of fall at 1.4. That's not typical, but I like seeing, you'll maybe see a little regression, like say, for example, from third to fourth grade, they go from that five, then it's that 4.7. That's pretty typical to see a little bit of that over summer. But you want to watch that so that it isn't too significant, um, because that would be you know, something we want to keep an eye on as well. But then they're always making up that growth. And as you can see, our students are doing a nice job in both math. This is the math and reading is the next one. So. Um, and with the math, uh, just the, the STAR assessments does kind of start to cut out in terms of what skills it's measuring and what is actually being instructed in our math, class, math classes at the high school level. Um, so, again, still some pretty good growth there, all things considered, because it's really assessing, in some cases, things that they haven't had um, reinforcement with directly in the That is good to know. And then the next one is, again, um, with respect to the math, or to the reading assessment, uh, the grade reading level equivalency score there as well. Um, and for whatever reason, Dr. it says zero, zero is kindergarten. This chart didn't like K for kindergarten. Um, and even though I changed all the settings to the same, you saw the math, um, it skips grade instead. This is first grade. Third grade there, middle there. It's the odds are a little. Um, this one does compute out four, um, nine, ten, and above. So then, in looking at this data, what are we doing here? Of course, we noticed that the reading indicates the most growth, um, but at least everybody at all grade levels were seeing growth throughout, so that's important. Um, I said earlier, reading, everybody's at the 50th percentile or higher, and in math, we're at the 70th percentile or higher. So math is a relative strength throughout the district or across if you're looking in general terms. Um, and then the other things, I guess, that we, we really want to make sure that we are considering um, is that STAR is just one piece of data. We're obviously looking at PARC, we're looking at SAT scores, we're looking at different, we're working on currently common formative assessments, classroom data. All of those things together is what makes up the true picture of how our students are doing. So this is this is just one piece of the puzzle. But because it's our local assessment, it's factored into uh, the growth score for teachers and their evaluations. Um, we definitely want to make sure that we're tracking it and using it as a tool. Um, one thing to point out is just for kindergarten alphabetic principles, we need to awareness. That's how we can have a kindergarten score. Um, they take an early literacy exam, which is a little bit different than the STAR reading test. So we have to compute that a little bit differently. Um, we really need to make sure that we are utilizing an assessment tool that can maybe a little bit better inform our teachers of how they're doing. Those higher level, those higher grade levels really cap out, and so it doesn't give us as much information as we would maybe like. So that's something we looked at a little bit last fall. We weren't able to move forward on it, but it's something that we definitely want to consider to look at again this coming school year with our peer committee. And what was that called? I can't remember that other assessment. The other one, um, we were looking at a couple different ones, okay. but I know a very common one that people utilize is the math. Assessment NWEA, is that the one you're thinking of? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there are several that can do that. Right. There are some other ones. There's Scantron. There's um, we looked at a couple other ones as well. There's some different ones for lower grade levels. But, um, and if we did that, would it replace the whole thing, or would you only do, replace it at those higher levels where you have the? Um, we have to take a look at that with the committee. I almost think we want it. It's nice to have one common local assessment tool yeah. so that you can really track that data throughout. So I would think we would want to look at something for everybody. For everybody. Mm -hmm. So and we. 
talk a little bit about those secondary scores as well. So, any other questions you guys have on that? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, let's welcome Matt Andrews back to the yes. front office. It's been a while. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. To yeah. <laughs> okay, information regarding the bid package three for the DVMS expansion project is included in the board packet. Are there any questions for Mr. Mangieri is here tonight? So, no, I made mention last time of the builder's risk insurance. Do you know if that was ever, did we get that on the project yet? Because I, I didn't ask Randy or Jack before they left if they. No, so it would be our builder's risk, right? Yeah. So I just want to make sure. That we. Sure. Sure. Okay. We should check to make sure we have Damon, do you want to um, double check on that building in the builder's insurance just in case something would happen? Got it. Thanks. Thanks, Pete. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Information regarding the request for future agenda items is included in the board packet. Are there any new requests to be submitted? Any comments? Yeah, I want to touch base. I, I met with each of you and touched on this. I don't remember which order I met with people, but it kind of 
came to me later as far as the future agenda items. Uh, I, I like the form. I think it's good. I think it gets people thinking in um, maybe a, a bigger picture. So I don't have a problem with the form. Uh, what I would like or ask the board to do is to have a deadline on those, maybe submit those the Friday before the board meeting. Um, that way, a, a lot of those that I've seen are informational type of items, just need some communication possibly, and then I could take a look at those and, and address those in my superintendent report at the next meeting. And then if there's future issues or you want more information, well then let's make it an official agenda item. I, I just want to get away from the practice of you know, agenda, future agenda items being turned in tonight, and let's discuss those openly when we really haven't had time to do research on those and gather information to make an informed decision. Um, I understand, I was informed a little bit of the past practice with that. Um, I realized I could get overloaded by board members. You know, if I have seven board members asking me uh, three questions a day, um, that's going to be a little much, but uh, I'd like to give that a try and see how that works out for us. I would just ask that make, when when people, um, you know, hand in the future agenda items, that you put it on your timeline, um, because you need to set your, you know, your your vision right for the next five years or seven years where you want us to be, and and everything that's generated needs to come from you, so that we don't have staff dropping everything um, just to you know provide information to the board when it's really not you know, on your top three or five. So put it that on your timeline. Sure. I just don't, I think we need to get away from telling you when we want things. I understand. If it okay. works that way. Any other comments or questions? Everybody okay with that? Yeah, yeah that's fine. So okay. then just, just so we have clarification, the previous um, um, situation, you had to fill out the agenda form. You had to articulate the reason why you were asking for it to be on the agenda, and then it was kind of discussed so that we would see if it would carry on. So the, the way that we're going to try it now is just to contact you directly, and then you'll take it from there as far as looking into it and putting it on, but it won't be a board discussion as to if it should be discussed or, or, or reviewed by yourself. Correct. Okay. Just I'll discuss sure that with the board member, and then I'll, I'll share that with the rest of the board if that's even needed. Sure. Uh, and then if it's decided by the board, you know, that is a good item. We need probably some more information on that. Then we can address that at the next board meeting and have it prepared for that next month. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you. Information regarding the request to review the achievement gap information and criteria for the U.S. News & World Report high school ranking is included in the board packet. Uh, Mrs. Bowman will present information regarding this item. Okay, so this was an easy one because I shared information with you guys via an email. So what I really did is just took that email and <coughs> kind of fleshed it out, added a little bit to it just to provide a little background knowledge uh, to the public as well. So with this item, um, the best high schools method, what they do is they take a look at these four main areas. So they look at the performance of schools, how they're doing in reading and math. Um, then they take a look at the performance of the different underserved student subgroups that are listed there, I won't read those to you. Um, then they take a look at the high school's graduation rate, and then the degree to which the schools are preparing those students for that next level, for college and career readiness um, via AP or IB exams. So the history with Dunlap High School is we have had a significant number of years where we have been ranked very highly in US News and World Reports, and we had information going back to 2012 that may even um, go back further than that. So not making it this last year was definitely a disappointment to us all. I mean, I remember the day distinctly when we found out the news and Mr. Adrian contacted me and we said, this can't be right, you know, what's going on? So um, we definitely took it very seriously right away and wanted to look into um, why this was the case. So much so that even that day I researched uh, Administrator Academy on um, subgroups and taking a look at that information on ESSA and our whole secondary administrative team actually went to that in June as a result of that. So the considerations for ranking that go along with the U.S. World News Report is that four-step process, but each step is contingent upon passing the previous step. And so we actually, we didn't make it past that we fell short on that very first step. And it actually was as I dug into the technical manual, it was along with another 12,491 schools that didn't pass that first step. And it was because of our discrepancy and our achievement gap, and that's what I'm going to get into next. Um, the data that was used for this were the park scores from 2015-16, and we'll talk 
a little bit about that here. So this is a snapshot from the school report card. Um, this is information that was out there and actually, you know, we take a look at this each year. So if you just take a look over on the left first, you can see that our scores, you know, this is the top score here, the non-low income is that high one. And then this one here is the low income level. So you can see in the 2000, this is 14-15 data. So on the left, this isn't what contributed to this. But I think it's important to recognize that that gap that year was 26, okay? So then you go to the 15-16 year, which is over on the right, and you can see our top non-low income score, actually, it went down some there from that previous year. And then our low income scores went down also, even further, making that gap wider. So that's really what contributed. That was the part that allowed us to not pass past that. So it, that was a concern for us back at that time. And I'm going to get into some of the things we have done since then, and then some of the things that we're going to continue to take a look at to hopefully lessen that gap. I think it's also important to note that this isn't just unique to the high school. I mean, you take a look over here. This is the district in the green. So we were at 31 that year, and we increased to 37 that next year. So this is something that all of our schools are taking a look at in their school improvement plans and goal setting, not just the high school. This is the overall park data. So again, 14-15 is on the bottom, 15-16 is on the top. It really just breaks down what I was showing you in this top bar here, um, and our overall scores, but it breaks everything down. And you can see, again, we had in 2014-15, we had a higher percentage of students meeting and exceeding than we did in 15-16. And then we had an increased number of students at the very bottom not meeting um, compared to the 14-15 year as well. So when this data initially came back, we knew that there were some things we needed to take a look at right then and there. And so that was when we had added some different things. That's when we put back into place the cooperative education and we added the alternative education. And with this last year being the first year of the alternative education, I did just want to point out, I know Mr. Adrian has mentioned before, but over the course of the year, first semester we had students recover 90 credits. Second semester, they set a goal of 110 credits, and they surpassed that goal. So then they set a new goal, which they met. So all in all, throughout the year, we recovered over 200 credits just in those, you know, in that alternative education program. So that's been a great addition to the high school, and it really does reach, you know, it's maybe not always low-income students, but it is those students who are struggling and who maybe are not being successful in our traditional educational settings. So I think that's an important piece to note. Uh, we've also taken a look at the availability of AP exams for those based off of Title I funding. This year I was able to secure some extra funding for those students, so they only had to pay $15 per exam as compared to 53, and we had 13 students take advantage of that, and they took 17 AP tests. So it's not a significant number, but yet it's, it's helping. It's every student. We're really trying to meet our mission and empower that individual potential. Uh, we're also, we've added for this next coming school year our Dedicate course, which is going to be, if you recall, for those students who are looking to go into education to work with our own teachers within the district um, to be able to go out and see if that's truly a field that they want to go into. And along with that, our computer maintenance course, which is much more of a technical course. And we don't have as many of those anymore, and so we've got to look to see what we can do to make sure that we're reaching those students. Uh, I spoke with Mr. Adrian, and he's really focusing at the high school on different professional development on changing demographics. Um, he has two different SIP days set up based on restorative practices and different things that they can do within the classroom for this upcoming school year. We're going to wait an hour on this update. <laughs> We're not going to do that now. Um, and then also all of our buildings, like I said, back when you're taking a look at the data, they're all aware of this. Again, back when this report came out, um, after I emailed you guys, I sent the message I sent to you to all of our building principals and talked with them and said, you know, this is important. We need to make sure that we're focusing our SIP goals on this this year. We need to make sure that we're continuing to have a growth mindset and taking a look at meeting our mission, which is really, we want to be able to empower that individual potential for all of our students. And so we've got to continue to make sure that that's an effort and at the forefront of the things that we do. So in my opinion, it's, it's a hard pill to swallow that we didn't get that distinction in that award this year, but I think it can be a good motivator for us to continue to move forward and look at what we can do for our kids to help them be successful. 
So were there other questions specifically that you have related to this? I had a question. Are they going to continue park? No, park. Oh, that's so I mean, how? So how is it going to be measured? Okay, so park is no longer at the high school. Uh -huh. In fact, that 15, 16 data was the last year of data okay. for the high school. Uh -huh. So then we had the year with nothing, if you recall, which we chose to give the ACT. Okay. And then we are now on to the SAT. Okay. And we have just given the second year of the SAT through the state. Um, so that at the high school level, I'm assuming that's what they will use. Okay. But I don't know that for a fact. Um, at the third through eighth grade level, yes, the state has put out to bid which assessment we will be giving. Okay. Instead of park, we don't know what that is yet. Okay. Good question. This is a little off topic, but has anyone at the district ever reached out to Caterpillar with the proving grounds out here of any um, classes or, or opportunities for our kids for machine operators? They've got huge classrooms yeah, and maintenance. Knowledge, I mean, it's close by. They got. I mean, mm -hmm. they've got classrooms already set up. I don't know if um, that's something would be look, explore at some point. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Any other questions? No, oh, I have okay. a question for you. You looked at the data here, and uh, so the data that they were using to kind of review was the 2014-15 data? The 15-16 data is what was in it for this ranking. So, so um, with that being said, and I know it's kind of always behind, so it's a little bit hard for you to, to evaluate with what the current situation is, but you know, I do believe that the low income or the lower income student growth is there, mm -hmm. right? And so we're seeing more and more of that in specific buildings. So I mean, should, I mean, I know you're working on it, and I know the buildings are looking at this to see how we can close the achievement gap, but um, I don't know, I guess, is there, should we have like some kind of, um, I don't know, um, update as far as how we're doing? Because if we were looking at that and we're not making the U.S. News World Report mm -hmm. and on the 15-16 data, we know those numbers are getting larger. You know, when are we going to do a stop check and evaluate that situation? Because if we have a higher concentration of any subgroup and if we, if we see that we need to address certain issues, you know, I want to make sure we're doing that in real time. Yes. Even if we don't have the data to compare, we, we kind of can perceive that, that that's going to happen, right? And Mr. Adrian and I have already looked at the high school data from that next. I mean, we're looking at that data constantly to make those SIP plans, but he and I have already talked about the 16, 17 data and taking a look at that and making our estimates as to what that will look like and making changes based off that, I guess. That's what I was getting at with that. Even when we saw this data from 1450 to 1516, we were already looking at, okay, what can we do differently? Okay. So, so is, is there something we can do, like as a board? Um, if, are there, if there are additional resources, just so that you know that it's important enough, right? Now that we have red flags going up, right? You're not making the world's news report, U.S. News World Report, and there are other things that are coming out that are showing that, hey, wait a minute, you've got an achievement gap here. We need to address all of our students and to assure that we're making sure that the kids are at the maybe the bottom tier that we are focusing and putting resources there because we need to make sure that that's happening so i guess i just want to make sure there's open communication that we hear from you in a timely manner so that if there's something that needs to happen if there's additional resources or or staff that need to go into specific areas that we're addressing it you know in the here and now right and if there are things that we'll definitely share those with you and make sure that that's happening i mean one thing that we did last year already um, was Ridgeview, if you recall, we added them and made them a school-wide Title I building instead of just a targeted assistance. And that was something then that can help us make sure that we're providing more resources for that building. So I think it's, I think it's those things we are doing, but we just need to really make sure we're, we're concentrating on that. You know, one thing we talk about at the middle school level constantly are the, the enriched classes, and it's awesome that we offer those, but then when you take a look at what that does to other class sizes, it can shift things around. So I've really been working with Mr. Holmes and Mr. Woolman and making sure that we're, you know, doing our best to keep those other classes at decent class sizes as well because we don't want to be, you know, you don't want to have your students who are the strongest in a smaller class and getting the most support. Not that they, we don't want them to grow and improve also, and that's why we have those courses for them and it's fabulous. However, we got to make sure that we're addressing the needs that are there too. Well, it sounds like you have assembled a pretty good team to help you kind of analyze this and chart your course going forward, so I, I appreciate that. Instructional leadership teams are great at looking at their data. I mean, they are the ones on the ground looking at it day to day, looking at, I mean, you should see the charts they have. I mean, they've got some pretty amazing charts tracking their student growth throughout the year, making sure that those kids are making progress, but we've just got to continue to make sure that we're offering 
the different things for our students that are going to help them succeed. Thank you. And I'm glad you said all students, because it was when, you know, way back when, when they talked about closing the, um, the, the achievement gap, it, it was kind of a misnomer to me, because I always thought the focus is just, you know, on the lower performing students, when really that's not what it means. It is all students, and it's making sure that even those who are proficient still get that individualized instruction to move up and move those lower performing students up. And as long as we're doing all of that, and keep that focus of all, that whole spectrum. Not just, well. right. We don't right. Anybody want anyone to say Thanks. Very good. Any other thank questions? You, thank you. Okay, thank you, Heather. Uh, information regarding the request to purchase uniforms for the high school cadet band is included in the packet for the board's discussions. Are there any questions? Discussion? I just, um, was this, Teresa, was this the, the situation that you were concerned with from before, the band uniforms? Right. Okay, right. so does this address that? This would. This would complete the entire band. Would this be for this year or for next year? Because the budget. I think they get it this year, but probably they have not ordered them in time yeah. to get them for this year, so most likely it would then be next year. Right. Okay. Let me just ask the administration that they take a look on, you know, what, how much, you know, their their bank account that they have, and, and how much can be divvied up, and what's coming, and that that comes from the uh, the, the band department and the high school administration. The superintendent, so his recommendation as they look Yeah, I mean, I don't think we've seen anything directly from band yet, have we yes, on we this? Have no, no, I mean, for this, re any information as far as what it is, I haven't seen that. You mean the cost? Yeah. I think they I, I put that in here, right? Okay. So it's going to be around 13 to 17 K, depending on the number of uniforms. When they did purchase the varsity uniforms back in the fall, they did include money from their fund, their actual fundraising fund, to fund part of those uniforms. I think it was maybe. I don't know, I would have to look, I would say with between five and 10 funds. But I guess what I'm saying so this is, is this request rest, needs to come from the high school, not not the, the board. We just need to back off a little bit and let all the, um, the wants and needs funnel up from the bottom, is what I'm, just to make sure that it's covered I, by the, the superintendent. I, I don't know if I'm cutting anyone off. I, I, I really can't hear the discussion, and, um, but do you mind if I um, make a comment? Not, not at, at all. all, go ahead. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can hear you, Karen. That's great. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think um, just, you know, as a point of reference, at the time um, that the band requested to purchase a band uniform for the district to fund that, um, you know, and, and they made a very compelling um, argument that their band uniforms are 20 years old. Um, but we were unable to approve it in full due to the budget constraints. But the circumstances have changed, um, and we now have hard numbers. Uh, regarding the actual revenue received and the actual expenditures for the 17-18 budget as we close out this fiscal period. So, and, and this is the same, you know, this would be the same position on our next um, item is lacrosse. Um, we, we now have some flexibility as our house is in order um, to do things that help support the kids directly. So, um, I, when Heather was um, reviewing for us the balanced scorecard. Um, one of our district's goals is to increase the percentage of all uh, secondary students participating in co-curricular and extracurricular activities. So obviously one of our main goals is to have kids be active both outside the classroom and in the classroom engaging and learning um, from those experiences. So I would support going ahead and when this item, I'm not sure who we're bringing up as an agenda item, the same as lacrosse, the board is bringing that up, um, and we now have some flexibility, and this goes directly to the kids to support one of our um, district goals. So I would support both action items um, for, for an information on one and action on the other. I think, you know, we, we want to have everyone on the same, you know, level playing field, and I think on the basis of the principle of equity, I think the board should support both. Okay, any other questions or discussion? And I just want to clarify, I support both. I just want to make sure that that you guys are all new, right? I just want to make sure that everyone takes, you know, re-looks at what we have and how much we have, and that comes from And, and we've the talked top about top. it, and I think both of these requests are one within the budget, um, so they are sustainable. Um, two, they make sense. Mm -hmm. And then three, uh, we've had to talk about, uh, getting a more comprehensive uh, 
uniform rotation policy in place so that there's a very set schedule. That would help Damon and I in our budgeting process. Um, it's been 20 years. I think they're probably due. And, and I don't know how they got left behind. Like, how were so, they never part yeah, of that rotation for, for schedule? Athletics, but do have, don't yeah. we have a rotation schedule? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, any other so comments? So you, your plan is to bring back for approval the next meeting for this then, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just want to say thank you to Teresa for making sure that they didn't get left behind because they did come and present to us and, and they were concerned about having the uniforms. And you're right, 20 years is far too long. There's no rotation there. And I think hats off to the band parents and staff that I think kind of spoke to us in uh, previous meetings about how many times they had kind of re-invented uh, the uniforms they had in order to keep them going this long. So that's so well-deserved and, and way yeah. over -deserved. I think they were doing their own patches. Yeah, absolutely. So they worked very hard to keep it going for this long. So. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, information regarding the request to review all school fees for the 2019-20 school years included in the packet for the board's discussion. Is there any discussion on this? The only thing I'd like to add to that is it's fairly common practice. About every three years you kind of look around at your surrounding schools in the area and look at what are others charging for similar type activities where you can make a comparison and then present that as an informational item to the board. Uh, we will do that. We will get that to you. You don't want to be the highest. You don't want to be the lowest. But you know, you want to be in the realm of the middle uh, in comparison to what others are charging as well. And, and I guess you, as a board, information when you're asked questions about mm -hmm. different items, you can specifically look at that and say, well, this is where we're at, and then you can gauge it against others. I remember seeing that. Wasn't it last year? We did that before when we went through the budget deficit. Um, I don't know, four, was it four or five years ago now? But I think it, I think we looked at we it. We did a comparison. Oh, I don't remember recently. I just remember the one Recently, way back. Did it? Like the you made it wasn't it a chart? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it might mm -hmm. be already. Might still have it. Yeah. It'll be old. Yeah. But, but it can be easily updated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teresa, I think also you're concerned, and I thought this as well, just look at this. We were going to look at the, how the these were, were laid out. Like a family max? Oh. Well, uh, no, they it's the everybody same only price, pays whether it's like one activity or five activities. And so okay. that was something, you know, several parents had mentioned to me when I was campaigning that, you know, my child only is in one sport and we pay this fee, and you know, my brother's children are in five sports, and, you know. So I don't know if there's a way to make it more fair or we can see what other people surrounding areas schools do. But I think that was something that Teresa and I both had talked about. And with that, we need to also make sure, like you said, a family max. We need to make sure if we change that, it doesn't get too expensive that kids are not participating in uh -huh. as much as they can. Uh -huh. Okay, any other comments on that? Okay, this concludes the information discussion item segment of the meeting, and we'll now move on to the consent agenda. Are there any clarifications or discussion regarding items on the consent agenda? Okay, I will ask them for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, it's been moved by Teresa Holzhauser, seconded by Abby Humbles. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Humbles. Blue. Cheryl, did you want to support the consent yes. agenda? She's up. Aye. Okay. So, Aye. Dishroom. Aye. Green. Aye. Sally. Aye. Okay, motion passes. This time we'll move on to the action items. Uh, the bill list and treasurer's report are included in the board packet for review. Are there any questions? Okay. I want to clarify real quick. I'm sorry. Had just back up for one second. Uh -huh. um, under consent to Bradley University graduation. I should have mentioned that when we were there. Um, they're wanting a $500 deposit. And I kind of look at it. It's kind of like, you know, you're booking a, a reception hall for a wedding. If we don't get that deposit in, somebody else could take that date. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and send that check. I mean, it's not new information to you guys, but I wanted to let you know. We will send that check so we don't lose our spot. Yeah. Good Did, idea. Was there some talk? I didn't look at the date on here. Saturday. But not Mother's Day. Okay. Not Mother's Day. Okay. Sa uh, Saturday before. Okay. 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 Thanks. Okay. 
Could I have a motion to approve payment of the bills? Can I, can I just real quick oh. make a comment? We met, mentioned, or I had to mention this to Randy and Jack the last <laughs> meeting from the budget. It looks like this year our surplus is coming in at 1.8 in the Ed Fund. And when we're doing that budget, the software they're using went off of the previous budget and not actual. And they said you could get some new software that allows you to budget off of actual instead of past budgeted. Does that make sense? That's what he said. There's some Just upgrade with our software. Five. Yeah, something like that. I'll defer to Damon on that. I mean, do you prefer to budget off of actual? That's where I kind of get in, because now we are kind of budgeting for next year. The surplus wasn't included, obviously, because we didn't have that budgeted, and that's what the, some of the comments were tonight. So we have this, and so I guess what I'm asking is, do you think it's an advantage <coughs> to upgrade the software so we're actually having real numbers that we know are actual to our next budgeted number or not? possible, I think it's always best to operate is with the most accurate numbers that we can so we can start to look into it. Okay. I'm not familiar with what Randy is necessarily talking about, but I can certainly look into it. Yeah, apparently ours isn't sophisticated enough to do it, and there's some $3,000 upgrade. It's like an upgrade from our existing software. Yeah, to allow it to be after actual, which... But as long as we're in agreement, let's try to go after the best numbers we can, right? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Uh, now, can I have a motion to approve payment of bills? I move to approve payment of the bills in the amount of one million one hundred ninety-two thousand seven hundred ninety dollars and twelve cents, as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved by Brian Zowan, seconded by Abby Humbles. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Zowan. Aye. Humbles. Aye. Blue. Aye. Bozeman. Aye. Dishman. Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Information regarding the Pepsi contract is included in the board packet for review. Mr. Hackett will present information regarding the contract. David? question is how do we go forward with approving it because in here you have the Board of Education approves the contract renewal which is five year but then in the paragraphs below you have um, it is the administration's recommendation that the board not approve the five-year contract so tonight Carrie put it on because if the board decided we don't want you to do oh, the no, research no. we just want you to approve yeah. it if it's not on there mm -hmm. as an action you can't take action oh no that's absolutely fine so, just so have table it. it's not gonna table. Just gonna table okay. it. we're just gonna table it okay. so is there a motion if you're okay with yeah. it mm -hmm. is there a motion if there's no motion it just dies it's tabled but that's up to you guys do you want me to have a motion to table you can do that sure okay is there a motion to table this I make a motion to table the approval of the Pepsi contract through the Bottling Group LLC. Pending further investigation. Pending further investigation. Okay. Investigation. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved by Beth Reese, seconded by Teresa Holzhauser. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Thank you. Aye. Holzhauser? Aye. Disharoon? Aye. Holtz? Uh, Aye. Blue? Cheryl, are you okay with that? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Yes, you Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. This concludes the public portion of the meeting. Uh, the board will now move into closed session. Could I have a motion to adjourn to closed session? I think I'm going to adjourn to closed session for the purposes of. By Abby Humble, seconded by Don Bozeman. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Aye. Bozeman? Aye. Holtz, Aye. 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 Aye.
Hi. Hi. Cheryl, are you and I on that? Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Um, we will be adjourned to close this. Okay, could I have a motion, please, to approve the human resources consent agenda? Was there a second? Second. It's been moved by Abby Humble, seconded by Cheryl Bluth. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Humbles. Blue. Aye. Green. Aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Could I have a motion to approve the administrative contract for the ESL Student Services Coordinator? I move to approve the administrative contract for Catherine Nervudas as the ESL Student Services Coordinator for the 2018-19 school year is presented. <coughs> for a second. Okay. It's been moved by Don Bozeman, seconded by Teresa Holes-Hauser. Mm -hmm. Is there a discussion? Roll call vote, please. Bozeman. Aye. Hi. Blue. Blue, are you and I on that? Hi. Dishere. Aye. Uh, Humbles. Green. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Could I have a motion, please, to approve the closed session minutes? I move to approve the closed session minutes of the regular board meeting of June 20th, 2018, as presented. Second. It's been moved by Brian Zowen, seconded by Don Bozeman. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Zowen. Aye. Bozeman. Aye. Blue. Blue, are you okay with closed session minutes? Yes, aye. Dishroom. Aye. 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 Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved by Abby Humbles and seconded by uh, Beth Reed. Is there any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Motion carries. The meeting is adjourned.